Hi everybody, namaste. My name is Matea and I'm here with a good friend of mine, Vani, who is an amazing chef. That's something that everyone knows about her. We just had a huge lunch with baked tofu and it was just divine. Uh, and she's also an Ayurvedic specialist. She's an Ayurvedic and a massage therapist who studied in India and has been in this wellness field for a very long time. So I wanted to invite her to join me today for a little interview about Ayurveda. Welcome, buddy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We've been talking about this forever, so I'm so, so happy that you're finally here. Vani and I have known each other for many years now, almost a decade, and uh, we kind of come from a similar background. I'm originally from Croatia. She's from Bosnia. We met here at Miami, in Miami, uh, but we both practice bhakti yoga. We are both plant-based, and we're both lovers of this alternative, so to say, healing and alternative lifestyle. And she's the perfect person to tell us a little bit more about Ayurveda. So do you mind sharing for someone who doesn't know, um, what is Ayurveda? What does it mean to you? Well, Ayurveda literally means science of life or knowledge about living. And it comes from India. It's more than 5,000 years old and it's actually the oldest medical system, but it's also a lifestyle practice. Yes, amazing. So, um, being that I'm a yogi and I, I practice yoga, um, what is the relationship between yoga and Ayurveda? Uh, yoga and Ayurveda are sister sciences. Uh, in ancient times and also right now in India, in many places, they are all practiced together, like they are inseparable. And uh, yoga, as you know, as a yoga teacher, uh, is more like a spiritual part, right? Like uh, focusing on the mind and uh, connection with the higher self. And, and Ayurveda is focused more on a body, on like a health, how to right. keep our body healthy so we can uh, practice spirituality. So Ayurveda also has this spiritual part behind Amazing. Like yoga. Nice. Yeah, and they kind of complement each other. Yes. At least that's what I, I found. Excellent. So you mentioned India. Tell us a little bit about how you found Ayurveda in your life. Yeah, I, I heard for the first time about Ayurveda more than 16 years ago from a friend who nice. also practices bhakti yoga. So when I started practicing bhakti yoga, I naturally came, came in contact with Ayurveda. And uh, I was uh, implementing some small practices at the first, and then uh, in 2007, for, for the first time, I went to India, and I spent some time practicing, uh, studying there. And then in 2015, I went again and uh, studied for four months in India, in West Bengal. So then I finally got my certificate as a Ayurvedic Wellness Counselor. Amazing. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> like, a really great experience. Nice. And in 2016, I went back, and this time I stayed six months studying. I went to Kerala, the actual birthplace of Ayurveda, and I studied some uh, Panchakarma therapy over there, and also some yoga therapy. And it was really great experience. So amazing. <laughs> so um, uh, as if someone is maybe new to these practices but is intrigued, do you think that Ayurveda is something that anyone can implement in their life? Yeah, of course. Ayurveda is really for everyone. Ayurveda is so... Actually, out of all um, health systems, Ayurveda is really unique in that because it sees every person as an individual with uh, unique needs and uh, it treats every person as a unique individual. So everyone can practice Ayurveda and... Uh... So, that's perfect. <laughs> yes, you're right. There's so much that we could say. We're like, <laughs> maybe I should stop talking now because I could talk about this forever. <laughs> We're the same. Bunny teaches workshops on Ayurveda too, so she's used to this. Uh, but tell me a um, little bit more about um, those different individual body-mind types. Can you share for those that just don't necessarily know much about Ayurveda? Can you yourself determine what your type is and what are the different types? Yeah, where there are some like uh, simple things that can distinguish each type, right? Uh, but like uh, Ayurveda sees the whole world through five elements, mm -hmm. which are space, air, fire, water, and earth. Mm -hmm. And they believe that everything Ayurveda believes that everything in this world is made of those five elements, and also we are made of those five elements. 
So that's the same thing, sorry to interrupt, yeah, yeah. that in yoga we also teach, it's the, basically that's the same knowledge, yogis will know that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to, to, to make this uh, concept of five elements easier to understand, there is now this concept of three doshas, mm -hmm. or three functional energies, which are vata, pitta and kapha, and each of them is made out of these five elements in different proportions. So we have vata, which is basically like a mostly air and... Uh, space and then we have pitta which is mostly fire with some water and then kapha which is earth and water so we have these three constitutions so every person can have all three doshas all three energies but one or two of them are more dominant so that's how we see the differences in people like for example you have like these people who are vata mostly they have more air elements so they're like a light they have qualities of the air like a light thin a uh, little space out, maybe. <laughs> 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 yeah. Then, like a pita people, medium built, they are more like a fiery, they have lots of fire, they digest food better than other constitutions, but they can also get easily angry and you know, yes, when out yes. of balance. Yes, I know all about that too. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and kapha, which are like a, on the heavier side because of uh, water and earth. Which doesn't mean they are fat, well, so many people think like a kapha is like fat, but it's not. <laughs> it's just like they have more of earth and water elements and they are more like a grounded, like a little slower because the water and earth they are like really slow. More and peaceful too, more compared peaceful. to the other <laughs> two yeah. doshas. And they are also more like a loving. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. Nice, amazing. So um, if someone wants to determine what their dosha is, how can they do that? There are many today, especially there are many tests on, mm -hmm. that you can do online and also the best one is actually seeing a qualified, qualified practitioner because they can do different, like a beside questionnaire, they can listen to your pulse, they can look to feature on the body, ask you some questions and they can more precisely determine your dosha. And there are also two kinds of, like when we talk about doshas, we have our true nature, which is our, it's called prakriti in Sanskrit, which is the way we are born, but then we have this uh, present uh, state, right. which is called vikriti, mm -hmm. and it's usually like an imbalance. So uh, like a qualified practitioner can determine both of them and give you like a prescription for the lifestyle that suits best to your needs. and. Nice. Yeah, I find that very important that when I discovered that there are those two different Prakriti and Vikriti natures because sometimes we have this repetitive behavior, repetitive qualities, which is our Prakriti, which is the way we were born, but currently we might be influenced in a different way and then to balance those two, trying to study or implement it on your own can be complicated without it's always good to do pleasure. maybe test online just to have the like a idea. picture just like yeah, mm -hmm. just idea to where to start and then if you want to go deeper and if you have more serious problems then well thank you practitioner is more advice Perfect, excellent, thank you. So finally, um, if someone wants to implement, as we said, anyone can implement Ayurveda in their life, if someone wants to implement some practices today, is there anything that you as a specialist would recommend um, uh, to someone just starting out in, in, their, in their Ayurveda practice, regardless maybe of their, of their yeah. constitution? Yeah, there are some practices that are uh, advised, advised for everyone and safe for everyone. It's like Ayurveda basically teaches us how to uh, connect with the nature in our environment. And uh, there are some things like um, waking up earlier in the morning with the sun and like do some light meditation. Also, like uh, actually first thing after waking up, according to Ayurveda, should be like a cleansing, internal and external. So mm -hmm. like going to the bathroom, like a bowel movement, you know, and cleansing the tongue, like a scraping the tongue, yeah. also like a oil pooling, it's very popular today, one of Ayurvedic practices, mm -hmm. uh, brushing the teeth, you know, those things like uh, cleaning the body and then like a meditation and some light yoga also. You probably know better which yoga is like a safe for everyone <laughs> better than I do. Like what I do is like a Surya Namaskar. Surya Namaskar is the base, yeah, for anyone can do it and even depending on the different type of dosha. If you need more fire in your body, you will maybe do it a little bit faster. You can do a more grounded and slower version if you need to calm down, but anyone can yeah. Yeah, adjust. Mm -hmm. So maybe, and, and also like uh, 
having breakfast. Like, you know how we are taught that breakfast is the most important meal yes. of the day? Yeah. Well, <laughs> according to Ayurveda, it doesn't have to be like that. Some yes. people can be okay skipping breakfast, mm -hmm. but you have to like uh, see how you feel with it. The, like, uh, you shouldn't be angry. If you're hungry, like right. so then you shouldn't skip <laughs> breakfast or feel lightheaded. But if you are okay without breakfast, you don't have to eat it. You mm -hmm. know. Also, like taking some warm water in the morning. Uh, that's to to, to uh, help the process of detoxification and the digestion. Digestion is very important in Ayurveda. Everything is like around digestion. True. Yes. <laughs> so we'll talk more about it later, like mm -hmm. about nutrition, and um, also like uh, eating lunch. The lunch, according to Ayurveda, lunch is the main meal. Yeah. And yeah, like I know in our society it's like dinner because yes. people are used to like sit together and have dinner, the biggest meal. But in Ayurveda it says the lunch and it's like a pretty logical because the sun is the strongest around noon. Yes, that's, that makes sense. When yeah. our internal sun is also the strongest. Right. And it can adjust even if we take some wrong combinations or something that is not good for our mm -hmm. personal constitution can be better digested in the midday. Um, early and light dinner, like early to bed, those are some practices that anyone can practice, like a start doing nice. Right away. Thank you. And that again aligns very much with yoga because in yoga we also teach rising early in the morning with the sun. Uh, it's much better for the mind as well. It's much easier to do meditation either early in the morning or maybe at sunset. Uh, but also having that very natural rhythm in line with nature. If I, if I can just say one more thing, it's of like course. very important in Ayurveda, like a prana. Yes. It's breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, a, you know, our attention today, uh, it says that prana goes. Uh, where our attention goes. Just for a moment, yes. can you translate prana for those that prana, don't know? Prana, the, the life force. Yes, right. Everything that gives like us living, yeah. yeah. Air, water, every, we take prana yeah. with all of, with food, with everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we get prana with breathing, and in, in uh, today's society, our attention goes everywhere, like we are always on our devices, and um, which is not so wrong if it's controlled, <laughs> of course. And uh, breathing, especially in the morning when you wake up, trying to uh, focus that prana, like uh, doing some pranayama or breathing mm -hmm. techniques, can uh, set the whole day, right? Like just trying to move it in the morning before we start our day. Yes, nice, thank you. Yeah, that's you can share also important. some of your experiences yeah. with prana. Like, uh, that's very important because in, in today's world we, for example, eat to feel satisfied or to feel full, but in Ayurveda we're supposed to eat not just to take nutrition to divide our food by protein and carbs and fat or by macronutrients. No, it's how much prana, how much life force can I ingest with my food, with my water, with my breath. So the quality of food, water, breathing, and overall lifestyle is what is actually going to de determine our health, our energy levels. So both yoga and Ayurveda follow that same principle. And in Ayurveda, as you know, we have a whole science dedicated just to breathing that is called pranayama. It's one of the eight limbs of yoga, according to Patanjali, which is the control of our breath. And so, yeah, again, so many connections between mm -hmm. yoga and Ayurveda. I love it. Um, anything else you would like to share about, about Ayurveda or your experience or just encouraging people to maybe give it a try? Yeah, like just please try to start simple. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to practice Ayurveda. Like I said, just these few little like a practices. And it makes yeah, a big difference in your yeah, life, yes, right? It's just, yes. I, I started doing oil pulling, pulling and it's, changed my 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 dental health tremendously yeah. and I just feel so much healthier and it's it's very simple. I just do it in the morning, maybe when I walk my dog and, and, and that's it. Or drinking water, drinking water with lemon, being well hydrated, breathing well makes the whole difference in the world and how our, our life is day day to day. Right? Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me. If you're in Miami area, you are more than welcome to come and see Bunny, uh, what, whether it is for physical therapy, for an Ayurvedic consultation, for health coaching. You can also contact her online. She's online on sweetsattva.com. I will write that down also in the, in the comments uh, because it's Sanskrit, so I know it's a little bit difficult for some people. You can also find her on Instagram. She posts the most amazing pictures that will just make a drool of delicious uh, vegan, Ayurvedic, plant-based, uh, healthy, gluten-free, all kinds of foods for all kinds of needs. And um, 
If you would like to learn more about Ayurveda and yoga, please join us uh, with our Hari Om Yoga and Ayurveda teacher training. We have two days coming up uh, this uh, year, 2019, May 4th to 25th or September 21st to October 6th in beautiful Costa Rica. Our trainings are uh, going to certify you as a yoga teacher and an Ayurvedic practitioner or if you're only interested in Ayurveda, you can take the Ayurvedic practitioner course which is only a week long during those dates. Check out Hari ohm.co for more information and thank you so much for joining us today if you have any questions any topics you would like us to discuss in the future feel free to write to either one of us uh, thank you buddy thank you namaste namaste